In this video, I am going to demonstrate the triangle tile activity from the Discovering the Pythagorean Theorem lesson. The scope and sequence lists in the additional support and resources a description of this activity from Mrs. Hester's blog on the Pythagorean Theorem. Prior to beginning this activity, you're going to need squares, which can be square tiles, centimeter cubes, or squares cut from construction paper or foam sheets. You will also need um, paper triangles. Mrs. Hester's blog has a PDF that has six triangles you could use, or you could make your own. Make sure that you have both right triangles and non-right triangles such as acute, obtuse, scaling, as long as they're non-right triangles. For grouping, it's suggested groups of three or four. In my classroom, I start working with partners, and then as my triangles get larger, I combine my partner groups so that they can share their resources, share their squares. The goal of this lesson is for students to discover a pattern. And the pattern is four right triangles. When you take the squares from the two smaller sides, you can indeed make a square with the longer side, which leads to conversations about the Pythagorean theorem equation. So to begin, I have my students first identify the longest side of the triangle, because once they know the longest side, they can go ahead and start building the squares off the smaller sides. I usually have them build the lengths first and then square those lengths because in the first lesson of this unit they were working with square numbers and that is an activity they should remember how to do. So once you square the lengths, before you move on, you want all of the extra tiles on, in their work areas to be moved out of the way because these are the only tiles they should work at from now on. Don't add any to this. Don't take any away. You want to go ahead and combine your red and your blue tiles and make a square. See if you can make a square up the longest side. Which works because this is a 3 by 4 by 5 triangle. Now, you're going to want your students to have a couple different right triangles to work with, but you also want some examples of non-right triangles. This is a 3 by 3 by 4 triangle, and you want your students to try the same. And you, they could do this independently. Go ahead and build a square off the smaller of the two sides. And as you're walking around the room, you want to make sure that your students are building the right sides. That's why I always say, OK, what's the longest side? Okay, we're not going to build a square off that side to begin with. We're going to build it off the two smaller sides. You've got your squares. And then, without adding or taking any squares away, go ahead and try to build a square off that longest side. So they combine their squares. And in this example, they have too many. So you, you, you're walking around. Let your students know they didn't make a mistake. Don't go trying to take any away. Um, it's okay that this does not work. To conclude this activity, you can do a class summary of this, or your students could do individual posters with poster paper. But take their triangles and sort them into the triangles that the pattern worked for. What was the pattern? The squares from the two smaller sides, when you combine them, they make a perfect square from on the longest side versus the, the triangles that it didn't work for. And then well, the ones that did work for, what kind of triangles were there? If your students aren't sure, you could even pull out protractors to confirm what kind of triangles they are. Only works for right triangles. And then you start having conversations about, well, in math, we represent these patterns with equations. So we take, we combine our two, the squares and the two smaller sides. We're combining, what kind of math is that? That's addition and they create or they equal the square on the longer side. So you're building that, that knowledge of 
Pythagorean theorem without ever actually giving them an equation yet. You're just having them put the words together and to talk about it.